All right, we're here with Tim Carr. Tim, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Good, Sam. Thanks for having me. So you were talking about mobile devices and those being political devices. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, there's been a lot of activity in the space around mobile phones, but most of it is really consumer-oriented. It's about the pricing plans, and, and there's a lot of organizing on the consumer front to protect consumers, which we think is really important. But one of the opportunities that we see as an organization is to start looking at cell phones as political devices. And you, you, you need to look no father, further than what's been happening in North Africa, in the Middle East, where people are using cell phones to document atrocities by autocratic regimes on the streets. And there is so much power in that ability. And that problem exists to some degree here in the, in the United States, where we have cell phones that are blocked uh, we have networks that are blocking certain applications and devices and increasingly we see that as an area to do a lot of good organizing around to get people really engaged in defending this notion that my cell phone is, is political. Not only is it a device for me to call my parents or to check in with friends or tweet others, but it's something that empowers me within this democracy and that is fundamental for us to start protecting our rights to access, our rights to access information, to share information via these new devices. What do you mean blocked? Um, there, uh, certain devices have been crippled, the term that they use is an industry term, where they cripple devices that will disable your ability to share videos or watch videos via your cell phone, disable your ability to use voice over internet protocol or Skype to make phone calls. Again, your carriers are phone companies, and so they have interest in not, in not allowing you to use other devices. So, so uh, we believe that your cell phone, which is increasingly are called smartphones, are your internet handheld device, you should be able to get on the internet with your cell phone and have the same experience that you would have with your desktop computer, your laptop computer. It doesn't matter what the device is. And how does this, what does this mean in the future when we think about consolidation of of media outlets and, for instance, AT&T, right. what does that look like? Well, that's a problem, right? It's, it, it, if, if that's a problem. The industry, I mean, we are seeing the old AT reformat itself in the digital era, which is pretty scary. Um, and so you, right now, AT&T has proposed a $39 billion merger with T-Mobile. And when those two entities come together, you'll have between AT&T and Verizon, which is the other player, controlling nearly 80% of the market for cell phone access. AT&T and Verizon are opponents of network neutrality, this idea that we should have open access to the internet. And so when they have so much market control, not only can they control the prices, not only can they control the devices, but they can control the network. They can control what you can do when you get online. And that is a, that is a scary proposition uh, in this age when we have to protect internet access via cell phone devices as much as we protect internet access via any device. What's so scary about them having control over what we do when we're on the internet? <laughs> well, I don't, well, I mean, you have to look at the internet and you have to look at how revolutionary the last 20 years of popular internet use have been for people. We have taken uh, information network that's largely top down. If you look at traditional broadcast media, traditional print media, and we've turned it on its head. The internet made that possible. And now as more and more people are going online, and importantly more and more people are going online being handheld devices, we need to make sure that the last 20 years of this open experiment of the internet were, just, were not just that, an experiment. And you'll see that has happened in various cycles of other disruptive media. There's a period of openness where there's sort of a blossoming of a thousand flowers. And then after a couple of decades, when industry players figure out what's going on here, they, they move very aggressively uh, in concert with government regulators to close down those networks. We are at that point right now with the internet, which is why this, this conference here in Boston is so important, because people have to reassert their right to open networks, and organizing around that issue is, is very important right now. Okay, last question. Can you give us a practical example of what it would look like for people if there was a closed network? Uh, it would look kind of like cable TV, I think. It would look like a cable TV where you have, a, you know, some people think it's great to have 400 channels on cable TV. I, I don't think that's great. The internet has 4 million channels and growing, and it would, it, they, your choices would be limited, and they would be limited to channels that are provided by very large corporate entities that can control your access to information. And we don't want to go back there. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.